And we are live. All right. Yay. Yay. I am alive. <laughs> this is a good thing. Yeah. We have someone here from Singapore. And she says that it's 11.30 p.m. Yeah. Hi. That's awesome. Glad to see you here. Yes. Hi, Barbara. So far, that's I have two people. So, yeah. Today well, we're I'm doing alcohol to, ink. Starting to see it scroll. So yay. Okay. Yeah, today is all about alcohol. What are you going to do today, Shell? I've got five different alcohol techniques that I'm going to do on ATCs, and right. I've got all my junk out and ready to party, and I'm going to put my gloves on. Awesome. Well, maybe maybe I can just sit and watch you again today, huh? <laughs> For the first time ever, I'm actually going to be smart enough while using alcohol ink to wear gloves. Oh, <laughs> well, I have my I have my gloves ready. Now, if you guys don't have gloves, I just go to um Oh dear, Harbor Freight and get a big box, you know, cuz they're cheap enough, right? Get a 100 <laughs> I've used a few. Get 100 gloves in a box for industrial use. This is uh, Nitrol safety gloves. I wear a medium. I don't know about you. I'm thinking these might be a small. I, um, I permanently borrowed these from the infusion center. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Holly. Hi. I don't think anyone's watching from the infusion center, so. Yeah, probably not. Well, <laughs> honestly, when I go to the hospital and do stuff, they usually ask me if there's anything I need to take for home. Right. So, mm -hmm. And a lot of stuff they end up throwing away. Like, what did I bring home last time that they were just going to talk? Oh, the pillows. I, I was in uh, the surgery center with my daughter. And um, they make the pillows out of this paper type product and they're and I was going to put her in a car and take her home which was about you know a 40 uh, 40 minute drive after she had surgery and she's got her arm all bound up and um I said do you toss those pillows she said yes I said can I take them she said sure so I, I took the pillows out of the surgery center to prop her up with they toss everything last time we stayed at the hospital they throw away everything. And one of the things that I got was plastic tub, which yeah. my husband has since taken from me, unfortunately. But it was perfect for throwing your stencils in when you're stenciling and, you know, just have water next yes, to your I have chair. the standard gray, gray hospital tubs. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. They're awesome for cleaning. Oh, wow. People are rolling in. Hi, Holly and Marie, Vicki, Sybil, Laura, Lindy. Frana, we got Leslie. Hey, 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 guys. Cindy, Ann. Wow, people, people are rolling in. Yes. We got you guys trained. <laughs> Wahoo! So let's get started. I've got my gloves on. I'm ready. Do, do, do. So, what's your first <laughs> technique? I'm gonna do some marbling, and I just have a this. This used to have salami in it. Put some water in it and i've got two different types of paper we're going to try i've got a 140 pound watercolor paper and i've got some glossy card stock and marbling is super easy with alcohol ink you just have to pick your colors so let's do that i just want something bright i think i'm going to start I with love that. marbling that's a lot of fun magenta magenta looks good um this is I can't tell. Sometimes I don't put the color right on it. Oh, indigo. Ooh, that'll be pretty. And yeah, let's good. go with another. Something like an orange would be nice with this. Orange. This one is just orange, I guess. Orange, you're going to use that color? I was going to use some orange. Yeah. <laughs> so all you got to do is just drop some in there, and it kind of blooms on its own. And so there's the orange. Ugh. This one's a pinata brand. It's a pink. See how it kind of blooms and then stops? 
it's actually a pretty interesting process. I don't know what it's doing in there exactly, but. <laughs> well, it'll all be different by the time you pick it up on a piece of paper anyway, right? Yep. And then here's some indigo. We'll put that in there too, just to add a little bit of intensity. Yes, and then, alcohol, it, you know, it's just like using your dye inks or any of that other stuff. Absolutely, you can use alcohol ink to marble with. It makes a very interesting effect because of the resin, I think. Mm -hmm. You get a double-sided one, too, so you might like the backside better. Yeah. Just depends. And you can, you know, roll it around a little bit and make it do its thing. But yeah, that's with glossy cardstock. Let's see what it happens when we do watercolor paper. Get some of those globs. Those globs are pretty cool. So the second dipping, of course, is going to be lighter. Oh, but you have globules. Yes, look at them. <laughs> They're cool. Yeah. I like them. Hey, hey, from Florida. Glad to see you hey, here. Yeah. So if I want a little bit more oomph on that one, which I do, I do like the globs, but I think it would be fun to have some brighter colors. I'm just going to drop them right on there. Yeah. Why not? Why the not? Of it, right? And these will be fun backgrounds for... My ATCs, of course, we're doing a, whoa, that went a little bit crazy. We're doing ATCs because this month over in the Art Joy of Sharing Art Community Group, we have a month-long challenge of doing an ATC every day. So it's good for us to have some backgrounds when we're doing the rest of the month. So all month on Art Joy of Sharing live stream, we're going to be doing all of our techniques on ATCs. So what are you doing? Well, right now I'm getting a piece of UPO um, because I think I'm going to start with a piece of UPO. If you guys don't know about UPO, this is a plasticized paper. And, you know, you can work with it cut down into smaller pieces. Um, I like to buy it in large pieces. Uh, this happens to be a medium weight uh, UPO. I think it's a 9 by 12 uh, package. And I get it off of Amazon, of course. And, you know, you can cut it down into ATC size. That's no problem. And if I wanted to do an individual ATC, which I will show you in a bit, using that, um, real easy to do. But what I want to do is uh, I've got a box here because I need to contain what I'm doing when I'm working with alcohol. And I've got a stencil. And let's see which one I want to use. I've got these ATC stencils from Stencil Girl. And I like this one from Seth After. So I think I'm going to use this one from Seth After on the UPO. And I'm just going to drop in some color. Now, the first thing I'm going to do with this is I've got 91 proof <laughs> in my squirt bottle. And I'm just going to squirt some of that on here just to lay in some alcohol to start with because, you know, a lot of the alcohol is really intense. And sometimes it's a little bit too intense coming right out of the bottle, especially these ones from uh, Ranger. They're, they're really strong colors. So, you know, I want it to, to blend and move around on here. So I'm just going to sprinkle in. This is a uh, butterscotch, which is one of my favorite ones from... Um, Ranger. This one is rust because I want to get rusty. I want to get a little rusty here. And we still had some more people rolling in. Um, I wanted to welcome Laura and Ela and Ruth. Hello, hello. We're glad you're Hi. making it here with us. And Kathleen. So this one is uh, red pepper. I want to add a green or something green. Let's, here's a here's a patina. Let's do Ooh, a patina. patina. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Do a little patina Kathleen, in there. Yes, it was just tap water. She asked a question. So. Yep. The marbling was just tap water. 
So I've just got all that ink down on top of this. Now, I want to move a little of that around. I've got an applicator with a felt tip on here, and I'm just going to move a little bit of that around. Because I have plenty of ink on here. I have plenty of ink on here. you got lots of ink on there. Yeah. You can have an ink party. I could have an ink party. These are soggy. Okay, so I've got it pretty much where it needs to be on here. I'm going to grab a piece of uh, photo paper. And I'm going to take the back of the photo paper. And I'm just going to lay it down and pick up the excess because that's all good ink, right? Ooh, don't want to waste it. No, don't want to waste it. You can start to see it coming right through the paper already. Because there's that good ink that's just floating on through, right? Yeah, I'll pick that up. And look at that. Now there's some more good ink. Not going to waste, right? Okay, so this has to dry. So I'm going to set that aside <clears throat> and I'm going to move on and do something else. Um, Holly, yes, the ink does seep under the stencil, but you will be amazed at what happens when that happens. <laughs> you want it to seep. It, it looks so awesome. Yeah, now these are these papers that you see right here. These are papers that I was just using for cleanup this morning when I was wiping stuff off of my stencils. Um, yeah. Awesome. I mean, I love, I love the cleanup stuff as much as I like what we get. But let me show you. Let me show you what you get. These are some of my first pulls this morning. Um... I was playing around with that ATC stencil from Seth this morning. This is one of the backgrounds that came off of that. I have some punched pieces. This is just um, the pickup paper from this morning. Here's another. This is a Pam Carricker. Look at that uh, cool archway that you can decorate and do something with there. Um, more paper pieces, you know. Here's one. Uh, this is a stencil, a stencil girl stencil from, uh, oh dear, Borland, I think. This is that, um, you know, so there's there's all kinds of stuff here that's coming out of those poles, right? They're just, they're, and the thing I love about the alcohol is how vibrant it is. You know, how what wonderful, vibrant colors that you get using the alcohol ink. Look at that one, guys. Talk about your rainbow week. There you go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I can even see the word here. I could highlight this just C on there. That would be cool. Here's a, a Pam Carricker one that's got the image of this, and I could cut that out and put it on another one of these backgrounds, and that would be cool, right? So, I mean, look at how many ATC backgrounds I got with just a couple inkings this morning. I'm pretty happy with that. Welcome, Azure Muse. So I went and uh, dumped out the water, and I got some new water just because I, I wanted to be able to see the pretty blooming as I was doing this yeah and I'm getting some new colors um, going for some very subdued colors though the first one was bright I think I'll go with these so this one is ah, mushroom oh that really dissipated really quickly huh it made kind I'm of a cloud. I don't know if I said hi Hi, Peggy, Leslie, Ruth. We've still got people joining us, Azure. Hey, hey. That one's lettuce. Mushroom and lettuce and currant. Oh, we're, 
we're having uh, food. <laughs> <laughs> Food's always good. Food works. I think, yeah, I think when he first named those, I think Seth named those to start with. And I think he must have been hungry because it was all about food. <laughs> Not Seth. It was uh, Tim Holtz. Excuse Tim me. Holtz, yeah. He must have been hungry for sure. Um, let's do another in this group. That's pretty light. I think I'm going to have to put some more colors in there. This time I'm going to put them in here again. That mushroom one just, it just, just totally dissipates. Yeah. Bizarre. The current's probably the prettiest one. They're pretty. They're pretty. I don't know. I just love them all. Got a little bit of the green too. So yeah, that's fun. Marbling. Marbling with alcohol ink. I feel like there's another blob in there. Maybe I'll just lay it right on top. See if I can't attract it. Did I attract it? I did. Oh, lovely. Lovely, lovely. Oh, chase that blob. Chase it down. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to set these aside to dry because they're too crazy. Crazy. So what do you got going over there? Well, I've got another stencil. Um, this time I'm working on some uh, photo paper. Now this is the back side of photo paper. Um, you can use gloss paper, you can use photo paper, you can, I've used just about every kind of paper there is, you know, when, when they t say you have to have this or have to have that, no, you don't. It's just, it's going to have a different look to it. Um, so depending on what you want, you know, whether you want a softer edge, whether you want a crisper edge, you play around with your papers and see what you get. Cause you know, me, it's all about the play. It's all about trying different things. Now, um, as far as the foam and felt and stuff goes, you can you can still use these old blocks, which I've used forever. I've cut my own felt. You know, you can go to the craft store and you can get your own felt and cut your own felt. Um, what I do say is, you do not want to reuse your felt. Um, you want to you want to toss that after it gets saturated because. You know, it gets that way. The other thing that I have um, that I like to use in conjunction with the alcohol ink is my alcohol blended inks where I've taken my inks and I've put them into the alcohol and made my own sprays. So this is something that's great to start out with. Like if I want a light color, I can pick like this is a forget me not ink in an alcohol suspended in alcohol and so i can use this as my first surface rather than straight up alcohol and you know then i can come in and drop in my colors so if i want to add some more of my colors to this And because this is a um, more porous paper than the Yupo, it's not going to move around quite the same as it did on the Yupo. It just, it's going to sit more in one spot. And that's the nature of the paper. And that's what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter what kind of paper you're using. Now I'm going to, I'm going to take some blending solution because I want that to move a little bit. So I'm going to hit that with some, because I want to grunge it up a little bit. Look, make it look a little more industrial. 
So I'm going to hit that with some blending solution. I'm also going to add some brighter colors. Oh, if I can get the lid off, which I'm having trouble with. When they get older, <laughs> like this has been around for a while, you see what's happened. in. That's why I store mine upright. Um, just as a hint, because they will leak. I store mine upright, and I actually went to uh, one of those discount stores, like the Dollar Store or Big Lots or something like that. These were given to me at a Big Lots store because they used it for display for oils. And when they were done with the display, they don't keep these things. So I'm recycling a display piece for my alcohol ink holder. But I know you can get these like at the dollar store and that too. But I like to store them upright just because they will do what I'm showing you here. And then you have to practically get out the jaws of life to get it open. Yep, spray bottles at Walmart, you bet. Uh, lots of lots of places you can get things from that are inexpensive. So I'm going to get my pliers so that I can get into this one. Oh, maybe. There we go. Like I said, Jaws of Life. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Oh, and then I squirted all over the place. All right. Okay, so this one isn't going to take quite as long to dry just because the paper is porous. Um, but it still will take some dry time because you want it to have, I got some goobers on there. You want it to have um, you want it to have the design of that stencil in there. So I, I'm going to see if I can peek under this one here and show you what it's going to look like. It might be dry enough. Sort of, kind of. I'm going to use a piece of just, this is just regular text white paper because this stuff works for picking up and mopping up too. This is just regular text, you know, like you run through your printer. And then, you know, because it's picking up the alcohol and getting a design on it, well, guess what? It can be used on your grungy books and scraps and, you know, all the things that we do. So you can see it's coming through. Soaking up that excess ink. Oh, and look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so this might be dry enough. Let me see. Yeah, kind of. Now, I had some silver mixative, and that's why you're seeing a glare in that pad that I was using. But you see how it looks industrial now because it's got the silver mixative in there. And if I come back and highlight some of that stuff, it'll it'll be pretty cool. All right. Well, I've got out some UPO paper too <clears throat> that I've already cut, and I've taken some um, Q-tips and bound them together with some tape just to kind of make a little tool. And I thought I would paint some lilac flowers because in the summer um, back when I was a child we had lilacs that were right outside my window and I just loved the smell and I loved just you know being able to play underneath them so I started out this is my palette by the way this is my um, alcoholing palette of course Ranger sells one and you can you can buy theirs. It has a lot of little holes in it a lot more than this one But this is just a cheap one uh, from Amazon And Yeah, it works fine. 
So it has dried alcohol ink in it. And then you can, of course, take a brush, make it an old one that you don't really care about as much because eventually the alcohol will dissolve the glue that glues the fibers up into the um, the ferrule. So that could be a problem. But you use, just use the alcohol, and this is 91% alcohol, to uh, reactivate the color on your palette. It doesn't ever go to waste. And then you can just paint with it. And you can do this on glossy cardstock or photo paper or whatever you want also. You don't have to just do it on Upo. It's just I had the Upo. I cut the Upo. So I figured wow. I would. Right. I would use it. I haven't made an ATC for today. So if I finish this one, maybe I'll. <laughs> it'll be my ATC for the day. <laughs> Some of you probably already have posted yours. But I didn't get there. I don't think I posted anything yet today because I wanted to do an alcohol one today. Well, you are the lover of alcohol. Thanks. I am. I love me some alcohol. I set up this day just for you. I'm so glad. Later on in the week we have, I mean, next week or the week after, I'm not sure when, we have collage. That's true. <laughs> That's true. It's only that fair, my, right? It's only fair. And of course, we both love uh, gel printing, so we already have yeah. that one. And I think the other one might be watercolor. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That would be. But, you know, watercolor can be a lot of things. It could even be what I'm doing right now, to be honest. Yeah, so this is fun. This is a lot like watercolor, really. Except for in watercolor, you're supposed to leave white space, and I have such a hard time with white space. Whoever invented white space should just just go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> don't like it, okay? I don't like it. I want color, color, color all over the place. Color. Well, I like the the reason I like alcohol ink so much is because how vibrant the color is. Um, you just you just don't get that with other things. So anyway, what do you got over there? Well, I'm just uh, playing around with this other uh, stencil. I'm. Uh, putting some ink down on this piece of UPO that is cut down to ATC size in some purple and blue because I know it's like purple but I think I want to add some of this this is some uh, this color I don't know I I have a love hate relationship with this wild plum anybody else like that I'm going to add a little bit, just a, a drop or two of the blending solution with this wild plum because it goes crazy. Yeah, that's I'm not familiar plenty. enough with my with my alcoholic colors to know which ones bother me and don't. Well, you're going to have to get familiar with your ink. <laughs> just yes, say. I guess I will. I guess I will. The wild plum is one of those colors that you know i'm not a real red purple girl and this is one of those pinky purples that i i like it in moderation mm -hmm. but not anything other than that and i need to Need to let that dry just a little bit before I can remove. I'm going to see if I can get my camera closer because ATCs are small. Yes, they are. I have mine zoomed up three times. Yeah, I, 
I don't know about you guys, but I have had a, a week of hell with computers and things and software and I'm just trying to get this to work and guess what it's not going to work for me okay all right be that way I just don't care that is just darn right pretty I like it I think I'm going to do another one some sort I also have spray inks that I've created myself. Um, I just bought these little bottles from Amazon. You know, I'm, I buy everything from Amazon. And then they just have alcohol in them and then some drops of the color. And I marked what they are. You know, you could go crazy. You could be like, you could make a thousand of these. So at some point you have to stop. Oh, I don't know, it'll be pretty. But you can start your background with sprays. I think Vicky said something about adding alcohol to um, already, already uh, done ones like um, Tattered Angels, like an old Tattered Angels. I think that would work. I don't see why it wouldn't. Yeah, I, I definitely would. You know me. <laughs> yeah. If it ain't nailed down, <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yeah. I have a ton of, of Tattered Angel sprays, too, so I'm sure I could intensify one of those. Yupo doesn't take well to heat, so it, I'm drying this very, very carefully. But I wanted to paint over the top, so I wanted my background done first. Yeah. So this is that okay. this is that one I was working on. Just made a really cute little polka dot background with that stencil. Uh, let me show you quickly. This is the Upo sheet that I did first thing this morning with a Seth After stencil. And you can see that because I mopped up a little bit, it's a much softer, like here, here I, I took the time to let everything dry on this one. This is actually the same image here between this and this, but you can see with the mop up, camera isn't doing it justice with the mop up it comes out quite differently from this and I'll put you know some final photos up on my video later so you guys can get some better close-ups so that you can see but um, I really like what's happening with this I really like the subtlety the colors are great you know I also like the really intense stuff so you know you can go both ways with this. Okay. Now, here's one of those pieces of Yupo. Let's cut down. And this time, I'm going to put this on here. And I'm just going to use my, I've got this, already has some ink on there. So I'm going to spray, this one is aquamarine, spray the aquamarine in there. And I'm going to add some butterscotch with my tool. Let's see if this, oh, this purple is way too purple. I need a different different piece well maybe this one isn't too bad yeah 
I use the one that I had the uh, wild plum on. Let's see what it does with the butterscotch and wild plum. Kind of turned my alcohol a funny color. <laughs> you did? Uh, well, yeah. You know, I'm using it like water, so then I get in there and get it dirty. Having fun, though. Not that darker where the bird is. I, I like the way I colored the, the stencil. So, you know what? I'm going to pick that up with another piece. Because I like that bird. And I can do that. I can pick it up with another piece. Yes, you can. Because I can always cut that out and layer it onto something else. Okay, let's see what's happening under here. Yeah. That's okay, but here's the thing. I've got all this white space. Now, if I'm putting a sentiment or something in there, that's fine. But I'm going to want to do something about that white space. So I have a, a brush here. I've got some alcohol and I've got a cup. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of alcohol in my cup. And I think I want to brighten that up. So here's that yellow that was stuck to everything. I need a need another cup okay get another cup and these cups are cheap enough you can just I have a bunch of these around the studio for whatever so I'm gonna dip my brush in the alcohol and dip it in that color and I'm gonna paint This yellow in. And use it more like a watercolor because I can add my alcohol. Okay. And alcohol takes a little bit of time because it's it's got to dry. And this is on Yopo, remember. But I do think I want a little bit of that showing up in the stained glass. So I'm just going to add lightly a little of that yellow into the stained glass area. Lisa would like to know what the name of that stencil is. That's an ATC mix-up from Gwen LaFleur. Mm, no. That's no? an ATC from, um, oh dear. Pam Carricker. Pam Carricker. Uh, Pam Carricker. L651 is this one. Okay. L651. L651. Sounds like I'm playing bingo. But it has, it has the the window with the bird. It has the, I should put something dark behind that so you can see it. 
Um, it has, whoops, and then I made a mess. It has this figural one. It has another window arch, the dot one that I just used, this uh, kind of triangular one, another window. I mean, she, she uses a lot of windows and shapes, arches and doorways. I like that. But um, so you can see that with this, I was able to go in and add the yellow into the window. And I can come in here and do a little bit of pen work over the top of this. And I just dropped some on my bird head, so that wasn't too cool. But yeah, okay. But here's the here's the background that I created off of that dot looking area. Yes, Leslie, you are correct. It is a stencil girl stencil. Yes. <laughs> can't imagine that we might have stencil girl stencils yeah well you know sorry guys <laughs> for the next year you're probably going to see a lot of stencil girl stencils <laughs> yeah that's just the way it is it's gonna be the way it is so i'm still painting my little uh one over here that i sprayed hi lisa i didn't see you come in and I've got some flowers on it. So I've got two different flower ones for today. I'm going to add some detail work using some Posca pins. You would not imagine that I might use Posca pins. Not at all. Not at all. But I can go in to these once they're dry and this one's dry and just add a little bit of detailing around these little flower sections to make it look more like a lilac, which is what it's supposed to be. It also adds a highlight. And I can do the same with the, the leaf portions as well. And I think it will look pretty cool and this can be day 13. <laughs> I think today is the 13th, isn't it? <laughs> uh, today is the 13th, yes. My yes, goodness. Okay. This can be day 13's uh, ATC. <laughs> Had a lot of uh, responsibilities and I didn't, I don't, I did not work ahead at this point. Well, you know, we mm -hmm. can do what we can do. Yeah. So since, I, I, since I have to make videos of everything, I usually try to work ahead a little bit. But yeah. Can't really do it. Yeah, you got to you got to do what you can do and sometimes you have other outside commitments. Imagine that. I know, like life and stuff. How rude for it to interfere with me. Right? <laughs> Just saying. Sometimes as you're using the Posca pen, it does pick up a little bit of the ink onto it. So you can just tap it off onto your paper and clear that off. Because your white will start looking like whatever color you were drawing on. <laughs> So lots of fun here. Let's see if anybody has any questions. Questions, questions. We're talking about wanting to get ATC mix up stencils, which I think is a great idea because they are perfect. They are. Little outfits. They really are. They're perfect size. And you know, I'm I'm using it as a whole one but you can cut them up if you don't want to keep it whole you know it's it's a nice size that you can cut up but then you know if i'm using a whole uh, 9 by 12 sheet which i do you know I, if i'm using a whole 9 by 12 sheet well then i've got all of this that can be cut up into atc backgrounds so but these are six by six stencils from 
guess who? Stencil girl. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a thing. <laughs> and I'm going to use these. to create some backgrounds also. Now that was one of my homemade sprays. That was violet. This one is fern green. So I got a little bit of that. And so I'm going to let that set for a minute. And this is on um, photo paper. Now I keep talking to you guys about photo paper. Um, I've got several different kinds here. And I pick it up wherever. I think some of this I got at a garage sale. Like this is a big box of hammer mill photo paper for laser. And uh, it had 150 high gloss paper sheets. This is another laser paper, um, color laser from Staples. You know, so if you've got any of this photo paper laying around, uh, not being used because, you know, we're, we're not scrapbooking as much as we used to. I mean, I, I know I used to print Buku photos, but I don't print quite as many anymore. And my kids are all moving away. I just got a phone call this morning. My kids uh, are homeowners in Florida now. So it's like, mm, all right. Um, guess I have a few trips in my future. Let me take a peek under this and see what's going on. Okay. That's kind of cool. I mean, I can see a, a cool ATC going on there, right? And let's take a peek under this one. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. So this is just cheap photo paper that I had laying around. And it's going to be beautiful ATC backgrounds. Well, I think I'm done with those. Got my little highlights and stuff, lines, line work on with uh, the Posca black and white. And I feel satisfied that that is enough for these two. So I'm going to move to a different technique. Okay. Um, here's an old one, people. This is an old, old, old one. It is tin foil. And, you know, alcohol ink works on metal. And I had this piece of heavy-duty tinfoil. And all I did was just smooth it out very smooth, as smooth as I could get it with the bone folder. And then I glued it with matte medium to some ATC-sized pieces of cereal box. Uh, someone sent me something in the mail, and it had, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. It had two pieces of cereal box sandwiching it to keep it from bending or whatever. And so I just cut that up. I wasn't going to throw it away, so I just cut it up into ATC sizes and threw it in my little thing. So then what I did was to create some texture. Um, I need to open this one up. Uh, with these, these things. Remember these things? Remember how excited we were about these things? Like, OMG, I have to have that. <laughs> and I hardly ever use the thing now. So which side is up? I think this side is up. So then I just made a sandwich. Not a ham sandwich, a paper sandwich, plastic sandwich. And put this through my die cutting machine. And then you have a textured piece of tin foil that thinks that it's um it, it thinks that it's something more impressive than that. <laughs> oh, let me get the duck cutting machine off my table. Okay. It's attacking me. So these are fun to play with. You can drip the alcohol ink onto them. You guys need to go somewhere else so I don't mess you up. It's a good chance I'm going to mess you up. Or you can paint it on, of course, if you want to. Um, 
Let's go with dripping first. Which one should we do? Let's do this one. So this one is like gears or whatever. So let's do some uh, what gear colors. What kind of colors do I have that say gears? <laughs> How about slate? That says gears, right? Yeah. And the fun thing about it, of course, is that the alcohol ink scooches itself down into the um, the cracks and crevices of this. Where is my spray bottle? Oh, here it is. And if you want it, you want to encourage it to move a little bit. You can spray it, and that's just alcohol, ninety-one percent alcohol in a reused bottle. And it actually smells really good because this was um, vanilla vanilla. Um, scented stuff that you spray on your hands whatever you call that and it smells delicious <laughs> the uh huh, mantilla black i don't think i've ever even used this one the smell or the scent or whatever must have been in the plastic and that the 91 percent alcohol Bleached it out, I guess. I find that pretty interesting. Where's butterscotch? I think butterscotch would go with this. Peg's favorite. It is one of my favorites, absolutely. I don't know if this is butterscotch. I thought it was. Yeah, it is. It looks kind of orange on this for some reason. And then if you want, you can take your blending tool and put some clean felt on it. I just cut these. And you can mush it around, make it interesting if you want to. This is just fun, just fun, fun. How about some terracotta? I think we need some terracotta. Oh, Lindy likes the gears. <laughs> it's like, you got my attention, she says. <laughs> I think terracotta is kind of a rust. So. Push it around a little bit. And because alcohol ink, of course, is attracted to anything that's non porous, it just stays on there. Oh, it's pretty cool. I think I want a little bit more of that black. Can you put it on? I'm going to smush it around a little. And I'll probably be pretty happy with this at that point. So that's pretty fun. Yeah, and then once this is dry, if you really want it to be a matte finish, you can paint some matte medium over it and make it matte because, you know, maybe, maybe these gears are old and rusty and oily. Or if you want to have some of that shininess come back from the tin foil you can use something like this a sanding tool and just buff it up and it'll it'll in the raised areas it'll have these very shiny bits you got this thing? now why did i get black on my other one you didn't want black on my other one it's a flower so every time you hit something with alcohol and the alcohol ink, you get these little, these little blooms, which I think are kind of interesting. So I'm going to set that aside to dry. Now let's see what Peg's doing. What are you doing, Peg? Well, um, I was hoping that this would arrive this morning, and it did. And I wanted to tell you guys about it because, um, and, and I'm going to try some because I haven't had this before. And... I'd seen it recently on, I'm going to try to remember the gal's video. Um, she was using this. It's a, a graphics paper, which is, it's a craft plastic. Okay. Oh, I ordered some of that too. Did you order some? Well, I, I just got mine. And Is it shrink plastic that you can put in the printer? No, it's not shrink plastic. It's, oh. it's, it's just... Um, it's a plastic okay, that's paper a in, in a white opaque. I've had it in the clear before, but this is white, which is like the uh, 
what I was looking for was an alternative to the UPO that was a plasticized paper. So this is this is like UPO, but much cheaper than UPO. Okay. Nice. So uh, that's why I was interested in it was because UPO is a rather expensive product. And so I wanted to give this a try. Let me get my box and let's give it a try. Yes, I want to see if it's the same. UPO is expensive. That's why I don't have very much. But oh, um, the, the only place that I found it other than at the graphics site is on Joggles. So if you're looking for some of this, that's where you're going to find it. Okay, so let's do let's do that same stencil that you liked before. Um, we'll get a good comparison that way, right? So I'll just put that down. Now the other product that I wanted to tell you guys about, which I have just seen in the last year, is this um, Pixie Spray. This is a, a light tack repositionable adhesive for stencils. Oh, um, yes. I saw Mary Beth with that. <laughs> well, I, I had never, this is from iCraft, and I had never liked the sticky sprays that you use on stencils. This stuff is not like this. That This does not make your stencils all sticky it washes off just fine you know so this is this is a product that i can recommend for you guys if you need to you know stick your stencil down to something you know suppose you're putting it on a curved surface or something and you need it to stay there um that's something that you can use so what am i going to do with this all right let's go back to Putting down some of these colors. This is a this is a really old bottle of pinata from Susan Pick and Pickering Rothamel. If you, if you don't know about Susan Pickering Rothamel, look her up. She's an excellent artist. Um, she's I think out of either Wisconsin or hmm, I might be saying this wrong. Yeah. Okay. But um, she has U.S. Art Quest as her company, and she has all kinds of stuff that's great. And she also um, has some books out that you might like. So I'm just going to put down some color. Sprinkle in. See, now her colors, this is a, this is a yellowish color, and it, her color is... A nice yellow color it doesn't come out um, you know some of those Ranger ones just get really dark really fast so and I have I have not only her stuff but I have things from uh, Jacquard which are the same brand because um, like if you're using the the metallics or that sort of thing I can get a four ounce uh, metallic like this and I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit but um, guess what shall they have copper copper, oh, <laughs> I love copper. so yeah and then let's on this one uh, let's also add some oh, I'm making a mess over here let's add some of the shimmer stuff the pearly I stuff see We've got, we've got some of these pearl alcohol inks. You guys get any of that? It's got a ball in the bottom. You want to make sure that it's shaking and moving that pearlized stuff around. See, this one's frozen already. Barb says she needs copper. Oh, copper oh, about the headache. Okay, so I'm, because I like... These designs over here, I think I'm going to add a little bit of this pearlized. I should get out my pearl inks too. I managed to spray. 
my blanks with red dots. Dang it. On the Yupo, you can just wipe it off with alcohol, but on these glossy ones, I'm not so sure. I did buy some. I bought three colors of the pearl. Uh huh. And I haven't actually really tried them that much. Well, you need to get them out. Today's a play day. It's time to play. Yes, I've got them. I've got them. I'm shaking them. Shaking, shaking, shaking. Shake, 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 shake. So, I haven't even just, like, dropped them on anything. I have painted with them a little bit, but yeah, I'm curious to see what the drops do. They shimmer. Um, yes. They shimmer. This one is a, a yellow pearl alcohol. Yeah, I have a yellow, a pink, and a blue. That's what I got. That would be pretty. Those are the. I just wanted to try them because I thought, yeah. oh, you know what? How many freaking mica things do they have to have before they say enough already? I know. But I had to try it. So. Yeah, you notice who bought several of them too. And and I I recall you saying you were not going to buy them. Well, I bought three. I bought three. Absolutely. I bought three also. <laughs> That is how many I have, too. I have, well, they have really cool names. Let's see what the names are. Tranquil, Intrigue, and Alchemy. Ooh, Alchemy. Yeah. Get some blending solution on there and see what happens. This is kind of fun. They do shimmer. They are shimmery. I like that. I like shimmer. I'm starting to go a little bit crazy. Might have to pat them down. I got too much alcohol blending solution on there. Pretty lady though. Very pretty. Maybe I'll put a drop or two of that shimmery yellow on my metal piece. You got your metal and you got your shimmer. There you go. Got to like that, right? Can't beat it. Pretty cool, actually. Pretty cool. I might accidentally have to buy some more of those. <laughs> accidentally? Well, while you're out there on goggles buying that paper, you know. <laughs> See, that, that turned really cool looking on the metal. Okay, I'm going to mop up a little bit of the excess. And this is metaling too. And then I think I already showed you guys, I scratched the metal on this with, uh, with this. Scratchy thing. I actually scratched a little bit of it off, but it made an interesting effect for sure. Kind of a scratchy effect. So yeah, what time is it? Nine thirty-three. We still do we literally still have an hour? Uh, no, we only have. No, half we've been on for an hour. Yeah, we've been on for an hour. Okay, half an hour left. All right. Cool, because I have more techniques. <laughs> I gotta find a place to put these to dry. Okay, so this one is fabric. 
And I washed this fabric this morning. It's just plain old cotton muslin. Vicki, I know that there is a resin in the alcohol inks, but I don't know the exact formulation. It's magic. It would be nice if someone would tell me, but they're not going to. <laughs> so let's. This is where you break out in song, right? <laughs> Do you believe in magic? <laughs> in young girls' hearts. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just grabbing some alcohol markers and some colors. These are Spectrum Noir. And I need, oh, look at my alcohol ink. It's all red. I wonder if that's going to make an effect. If that's going to have an effect. We'll find out. We'll start with purple. So you can do some pretty darn fun things with alcohol markers. Very simply. You can do really simple things. Like just making some dots. And then when you take a dropper and get some alcohol this is just again the 91 percent alcohol and just drip it yep <laughs> this alcohol definitely has some uh, red in it look what happens in fabric isn't that cool cool that is so simple that's like the simplest thing anyone could ever do in the world but it is so freaking cool you can make just very simple designs like this. Maybe add a little bit of yellow into it. Same thing, just drip right into the center. And it blooms out and makes a, an explosion or a floral bit. And you could do this on clothing. So you could end up with a really cool t-shirt or something doing that. Just with very simple shapes. Kind of mesmerizing to be honest. I'm a little bit mesmerized. <laughs> let's go. Let's see. Which color didn't I do yet? I did green. Let's do a blue one over here. Oh, Fia, you know I'm with you. Absolutely. Feel better. Oh, that's so fun. Mesmerizing. Let's go see what Peg's doing. <laughs> Peg is outlining her outlining. the stencil. Well, because I started cutting some of these down, and I, I could see some things in here that I wanted to highlight. So I'm just grabbing a pen and doing a little bit of pen work on this. Um, because he has hidden words in here. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Seth Apter's work, but um, you see how he's got seek, but the S is turned the other way, and it's got all of this detail, all of this. I mean, isn't that cool? I love the texture in that. So I started cutting up some of these. And they're, they're, to me, they're really interesting. Like here, it's got these letters in the background. I mean, this could become a word here. I could add some more words to this. This is a B, and I could make beauty or something out of this, you know. So, you know, I'm starting to look at these pieces and see 
what I have here. Same thing, you know, here's that, here's that um, church window one with the bird. I would, I would come back in here and outline this image. Because our little little birdie needs some emphasis. There's this little wing. You know, so you can just you can help your images, and then you know where it's. Normally, where I would um, do shadowing, I still can because I could take. Um, here's a pit brush pen, and I can do my shadowing around this with my pit big brush. And then, you know, if you want to drop in more color or anything like that, um, you can use alcohol markers. Oops, I just knocked over my, knocked over my drying rack here. So I've got, um, I've got Copics. You know, so if I wanted to add more color, let's see what this color looks like. I can add, you know, suppose I want to add a little more color into my bird here. I can use some of these Copics because they're alcohol-based marker, right? It's a little bit darker. Get a little more, more dark on the wing. You see that? You see how the color is darkening there on the bird? Welcome, Becky. So those are other things that you can use with that. Of course, you can just use your straight alcohol like we've shown you in a brush. You know, if I want to, if I want to change something here, you know, I can use my alcohol in a brush, and I can change this up with my brush. Clean that up. Oh, that so good. You guys see how it cleaned that edge there with the alcohol? So I just put some real like almost like tribal markings on my fabric with the same alcohol markers and then I just spritzed it instead of doing the dripping in the center and it also does a, a interesting bleeding effect. And then of course how can these be ATCs? Well when they're dry I'm just going to um, put them right on some, you know, some background, either a tag board piece or a card or something. This one I just laid over the top of the leftover and it's got more ink onto it. And it's just going to be, it just almost looks like a tie dye. You could also, of course, you can tie dye it with alcohol ink. You can tie, you know, tie the things in knots and then put alcohol on them and they get alcohol tie dye and it's permanent so you can do it with clothing too of course i can come back in and add detail on this too once it's dry so that's alcohol ink on fabric yay i have one more thing still can you believe All right. it right <laughs> rolling today kid <laughs> Oh, 
So this is something that I saw Barb Owen do, and then I looked up the artist that she uh, got it from, or the book that she got it from. I didn't read the book, but I looked up the artist, and I said to myself, OMG, I want to make collage paper like this. Um, this is wax paper, just plain old cheap waxed paper wadded up in a ball and I started it early because I wasn't sure how long it would take for the first step to dry. You know, Barb's show is like two and a half hours, three hours long and she does everything very slowly. So I never know for sure if, if I have the right amount of time on my shorter show. So it looks like this, just wadded up wax paper, right? And then um, you take India ink which, where's my box of indie ink? I just use this kind, Speedball, super black. And you just very, very gently and very carefully apply it. This one I got way too much. And I even sprayed that with water to try to get some of it off. And it turned it brown, which is kind of weird. Um, this one is better. Basically, you're just trying to get the India ink down into the creases of the wax paper. And it dries on there. It's permanent. And then it becomes what looks like batik. And if you guys have ever watched batik, I used to see it when I was a child. There was, my mom had a friend who was an artist named Charlotte, and Charlotte did batik on fabric. And it's a it's a applying wax to fabric and then dyeing it, and the wax becomes a resist, but it also cracks. It's it's crackly like this. And I think I think that's actually where I got my idea of how I like to do collage with paper and stuff. I like that. I don't know how to describe it. But once you have this stuff, then you can apply alcohol ink to it. And what she was doing was um, she was tracing a pattern onto it. And I'm not going to trace because I don't have anything to trace, but I'll draw. <laughs> and she used a Sharpie marker. To do that, I don't have a Sharpie marker, so I'm just going to use a different type of permanent marker. But I'm just going to draw a simple, very simple shapes on here so that I can give you an idea of what it looks like when you've done it. The marker seems to want to get a little weird. I don't know what it's doing for sure. Well, Let's do that. one. Eh, it didn't make it. It acts like it's dry. This is an old marker, so maybe it is dry. But I'm just trying to get some permanent marks on here. I'm going to put some more round circles down here. Just a very simple design. Nothing fancy. Not too fancy. Nothing fancy. Just put another little leaf over there. Something like that, you know. Like you do. <laughs> and then you can just take, like we were before, you got the big fancy palette from um, Tim Holtz. I don't, but <laughs> you can paint with the alcohol on it. You can pick up your alcohol inks, or you can, of course, put more in there if you want to. And you can paint onto it. And it just looks super cool. Super cool. Super cool. Then she just mounted some of them onto cards, and she mounted some of them. Uh, one of them was in her art journal. She has a big uh, art journal that she made. And, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was cool. And she was blending colors. 
um, into other colors. I didn't watch the whole show because I don't have any patience. But you get the idea. <laughs> and I, I think that once it's glued down onto white, it becomes much brighter. And you see all the little cracks, the wax cracks. Haha, <laughs> wax cracks. <laughs> so yeah, that's the fifth thing I wanted to do today. Just get my um, alcohol water even dirtier. Yeah. So what you doing? Well, I'm getting ready to put some layers on here. I see, see I've got a nice pile of cards out of my desk and I've got my, this is a misty stamping tool. And what I put in here is some of the sticky stuff from Sizzix. It's like a, a double stick. And the reason I put that on there is because these small cards tend to move around when you're doing something like this. So, you know, if you got a way to stick it down, that helps. So it's not going anywhere because it's it's stuck to the surface. The card's not going to go anywhere. And um, I've got a stamp here. And I want to figure out where I want it to be on this. Actually, I think I want to move this up a little bit so I can get the whole image on there or most of the image on there. So let's see. I'm going to go this way. So I'm going to stamp my image in. This is an art stamp from Carabella Studio. So I'm going to going to position that where I want it to be on my ATC. And I'm going to ink that up. Oh, only it's crooked. See, that's why you have straight lines on here, folks. You're supposed to use the straight lines. <laughs> okay, I'll straighten it up. It's not always easy, you know, doing straight lines. Okay, so I'll stamp that down. See what that looks like on that background. It needs more ink, which was what I was afraid of because these are still a little bit damp from this morning. And ink really likes a drier surface. So we'll just stamp it a few times, make sure it gets a good coating of ink on there. sure the ink transfers and I think that's pretty good so you see that like that one wipe my ink off of my stamp and you know people ask me what do you clean your stamps with um, a rag <laughs> water a rag um, I don't spend a lot of time cleaning stamps and stencils. You know that about me. Me neither. So that's one. Let me see. I think I want to do... That one. I'm looking at my backgrounds, trying to see which ones I want to put a stamp onto. Oh, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I like the window. Oh, she could be peeking in a window. Yeah, why not? Uh, let's do this one. 
I've got some little fairies here. And she could actually be like from the outside looking in. Yeah, let's do that. Blue brush got a little crunchy. Uh -oh. wah, wah. Yep, India ink. Absolutely. Pips are in India ink. reason she isn't inking very well. I'm going to wipe her off and try it again. And it might just be because I think that's on Yupo. And Yupo reacts differently. See, it's almost like repelling. I can see that. It's almost like repelling. Try it again. Yeah, I might have to do a little touch up with a brush and some ink. That's what Happens. this kind of stuff is for. So you can just touch up that kind of thing. But yeah, kind of looks like she's sitting on a branch peeking in a window, right? That little sneak. <laughs> okay. Some of these, I think I might just put a sentiment on, like take something like this, try to line it up a little bit. And, you know, you can add all kinds of things. Um, I've got words and letters and stickers and let's see, here's a Here's a sticker. Let's put a sticker on this. Because basically what I've done is I've created all kinds of backgrounds. So now... That's what we're doing. We're making backgrounds. <clears throat> I think I want that position lower. You don't have to use the whole base. And put it down there and I can trim that off. See you later, Fia. Just like that. People are starting to bail. We must yeah. be almost over. It's getting close. Oops. Oops. 
I'm holding my breath again. <laughs> okay, so just trim that down a little bit. There's another layer. Let's take a look at that new paper and see how it turned out. Should be almost dry, if not dry, not quite dry, but there again, you know, it's plastic, so it takes a little bit more time. Let me hit it with a heat tool. Now remember, it's plastic, so you don't want to overheat it. It's just like Upo. Upo, you do not want to overheat because it will buckle. Okay, let's peel this up, see what we've got. Here it is. And it's very wet, so let me hit it again. Normally I would let this dry overnight. We only have an hour and a half show, guys. <laughs> so, let me dry this. So I um I uh, made the lines darker on my batik piece with a Posca pen after the fact because I don't think that that other marker that I had was sufficient to make them dark enough. I want them to really show up. And I'm going to trim that down and mount it on a piece of black because the piece of wax paper wasn't quite large enough. And then here is one of my fabric pieces that I did with the, uh, the alcohol markers. It's not quite dry, but... I glued that. I actually have some extra pieces that could be cute on a tag, you know, as tag fibers. But again, you could take a marker if you wanted to and draw right on the fabric and bring out some of these flower shapes. This one reminds me of a, um, oh, what's that flower that has the stripes in the summer? I can't remember right now. Petunia? Yeah, petunia. That doesn't this one right down here look like a petunia? Yeah, could be. Yeah. So yeah. You could go crazy here. Bringing this all together. Yeah, this is fun. It is. So I hope you guys have enjoyed our show today. It looks like it's time to be done. But let's get all of our pieces out and give you a look to see what we made today. Here's my little painted ones. Some other ones over here. We started with the marbling. They're pretty dry now. And I've also got some lovely deli paper that <laughs> soaked up all the ink. Yeah. And I have a couple more pieces of fabric. So that's what I did today. See what Peg's got. Oh, I was actually able to create a whole pile of stuff to get going with. And then, um, this is that new paper. 
which I like uh, it joggles and it works just fine. Works just like the Yupo as far as I'm concerned. So if you're interested in that, it is graphics, G-R-A-F-I-X. And it's a white opaque craft plastic. I got it in the nine by 12. And I think, okay, I can tell you exactly how much it was. The pack of 25 is eleven dollars and four cents okay so that's a heck of a lot cheaper than Upo. all right i guess we are done please remember to give us a thumbs up leave us a comment if you'd like to so that our channel can grow a little bit more i'm glad to have all of you here it looked like uh, we had maybe 25 or so people, and that was awesome. And we will see you again next time, next week. And I believe we're doing watercolor on ATCs. So, yeah. Bye-bye, everyone. We'll see you then. Bye.